Here we are together. Oh, here we are in one accord. Lifting up, lifting up the name of Jesus. Yeah, we will shout it out. Yeah, we will make a joyful sound. Lifting up, lifting up the name of Jesus. Oh, oh. lifting up, lifting up the name of Jesus. Here we are. Here we are together. Here we are. Lifting up the name of Jesus, we will shout it out, we will shout it out, we will, we will make a joyful sound, yeah, lifting up the name of Jesus. Come on, here we are. Here we are together. Here we are. Here we are lifting up. Lifting up the name of Jesus. We will shout it out. We will. We will make a joyful sound. Lifting up. Lifting up the name. Everybody sing holy, let us all of the name. Oh, come on now and give a praise. Oh, lifting up the name of Jesus. Yeah, everybody sing holy. Let's sing it one more time. Here we are. Here we are together. Come on, lift it up. Here we are in one accord. Lifting up. Lifting up the name of Jesus. We will shout it out. We will shout it out. We will. We will make a joyful sound. Yeah. Lifting up. Lifting up the name of Jesus. Somebody sing holy, let us all lift his name. Oh, come on now and give a praise. Yeah, lifting up the name of Jesus. Yeah, holy, let us all lift his name. Oh, come on now and give a praise. Yeah, lifting up the name. the 
Somebody shout, my God is mighty. Say it again. He can do anything. How many of you believe that this morning, that we serve a mighty God? He is mighty, mighty, mighty. Hallelujah. My God is mighty. He can do anything. There is nothing, no, no, nothing he can't do. trust. I'm gonna trust in him every single day. Oh, my God is mighty. He can do it. I'm gonna trust in him every single day. You never fail. You never 
I just say, I'm going to trust you, Lord, every single day. Hallelujah. Just say that with me. Say, Lord, I will trust you every day. Come on, just lift your hands up in this place. Lord, we're going to trust you, Father, as our way maker, as our healer, as our miracle worker, Father God. He does miracles that we can't even fathom. He's working in your behalf. Pour out your presence in this place, oh God. Come on, take 20 seconds. Just tell the Lord you love him. Lord, we love you, Jesus. Lord, we worship you. We give you glory. It all belongs to you. Yeah. blind to see is moving here in front of me moving here in front of me the one who made the deaf to hear is silencing my every fear silencing my every fear Come on, sing. I believe in you I believe in you, you're the God of miracles, I believe, I believe in you, I believe in you, you're the God of miracles, say it again, I believe in you, I believe in you, yeah, I believe you're the God of miracles. Lord, I believe, I believe in you. Yes, Lord, I believe in you. I believe you're the God of miracles. Oh, you're the God. who does the one who does impossible is reaching out to make me whole reaching out to make me whole the one who put death in its place his life is flowing through my veins his life is flowing through my veins I believe
the God who brings the dead to life. You're the God of miracles, the God of miracles, the God who was and is to come, the power of the risen one. You're the God of miracles. You're the God of miracles. Come on, get that in your spirit today. The God who was. The God who was and is to come. The power of. Yeah. The power of the reason The God who brings the dead to life. Yeah. You're the God. For 30 seconds, I want you to give him praise like he's the God of the miracle. Come on, praise the name of the Lord like you know that you've received your miracle this morning. Hallelujah. I want you to praise him like you know that you know that you know that God is working for you, for your miracle is in the hands of the Lord. The Lord is mighty strong in battle. Nothing can defeat our God. Our God is greater. God is stronger. Our God is bigger. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are strong enough, Lord. You are big enough, Lord. You are great enough, Lord. I will praise you. I will praise you. You are big enough, Lord. You are strong enough, Lord. 
somebody praise the name of the Lord. Lord, we thank you for your presence this morning, Father. We believe in you, Lord. You are the God of miracles. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Do you believe that God is a God of miracles? Let me just speak to you who may not believe or may be unsure. God will take you at your level of faith. If you're unsure, you just don't know. Maybe you've never experienced a miracle or what someone else would describe as a miracle. I want you to know something. I want to introduce you to the one who can do anything in your life. His name is Jesus. And, and I want to pray this morning. If you are in need of a miracle, and, and by that I mean something that no one else can do, something that you require, something that's necessary in your life, medical technology can't do it, man-made man -made answers can't provide it. If you're in need of a miracle, we're going to pray for you today because I truly believe in the miracle. I believe in the God who performs the miracle. You say, Pastor Steve, do you really believe that? Absolutely. With everything that is within me. And we're going to pray. And I just, again, want to speak to those of you that perhaps just may not know, just, just don't know. If you'll just take a step of faith, it may not be a giant leap of faith in your eyes, but just a step of faith towards God. I believe that God will meet you. I believe that. I believe you'll take one step. If you just give God a, a, just a crack in the door of your life, I believe God will meet you. So here's what I'm going to ask you to do. If you're in need of a miracle, I'm going to ask you to lift both hands in the air. You need a miracle in your life. And, and again, I, I'm speaking to those that just may not be sure. Just take a step of faith. What do you got to lose? What have you got to lose? I'll tell you what you've got to lose. You've got to lose the problem that you're facing in your life today if you'll just come to Jesus. And I'm going to offer a word of prayer. And I want you to offer your prayer to the Lord. You don't know how to pray. Just talk. Just tell God what you need. You don't have to be religious. You don't have to be church. Just talk to God. In fact, everyone in this room right now, just talk to God. Tell Him what your needs are. Tell Him where you are. Tell him, tell him your heart. If your heart's broken, tell him it's broken. If, if you're facing the worst thing you've ever faced in your life, tell God that. Just be honest with him, candid, because he already knows. Join with me in this prayer. Father, we come to you this morning, and first of all, we want to say thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you that you don't accept me because of all of the good that I do. You don't reject me because of all of the bad that I've done. You accept anyone who come to you, Father. Simple faith. Simple faith. Trust. Just, just willing to take one step of trust towards you. And I believe, Heavenly Father, if someone here this morning is just willing to take that one step of trust, that you will run to them today. And you'll reveal to them how much you care and love them. And in the hands that are lifted here this morning, Father, these are your children. These are the ones that you love. These are the ones that you call sons and daughters. You know the need. You know every detail of the need. But not only, it's just not enough that you know about it, Father. You have an answer for every hand that is lifted. An answer that can only come from you. This is the testimony that we have. That, Father, we've looked to every other source and we found no answers. But today we look to you and you are the answer. And Father, we say thank you. Because it's not about how I feel. It's not about my emotions. It, it's not about feeling goosebumps. It's all about trust. Just my willingness to trust you and take that step. And I pray this morning, Father God, that you reveal yourself in a very real way, a very practical way to everyone whose hands are lifted. And Father, to that person who wouldn't lift their hand because they're just not sure, I pray today, Heavenly Father, that you reveal yourself in such a way, Lord God, that there will be no, no question, no doubt. We give you praise and thanks, Father, because you are the God of the miracle, the miraculous, the supernatural, and we rest in that, and we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I want you, regardless of how you feel right now, you may not feel one thing, you may not feel that anything happens, but because you know God, because you know with God there is more, I want you to just give God the highest praise that you have in your heart today. Give him praise and thank him for what he's done here this morning. It's all about God. It's all about what God does in our lives.
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now today is a day of change and transformation. Today is a new beginning in your life. And I believe that God is smiling over you today. Praise the Lord. Turn to somebody, wave at them and say, I am so glad that you are with me today. Praise the Lord. And smile while you're saying it. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I want to ask you this morning, have you joined Prayer Force? And if you have not joined Prayer Force, I am recruiting. I am the recruiter for Prayer Force. That is our faith in asking God to do, as we did this morning, asking God to do what we cannot do for ourselves or what no one else can do for us as well. Prayer Force, you join that in one of two ways. Number one, to sign up at the Departmental Activity Center as soon as the service is over this morning. And if you sign up, you will be on our list so that we'll send you the prayer needs and prayer requests that we have in the course of the week. We pray there are a group of people that gather together and pray every single day, and especially on Wednesday nights, Wednesday nights, hour of power, prayer time. And we, we invite you at 6 o'clock, you join with us in the prayer chapel, or uh, you can go online, a Zoom meeting with us, and join with us live uh, via Zoom. And uh, we pray, and I, I want you to know this, we pray for you specific needs that we're aware of we bring you before the Lord and we pray that God will do a miracle in your life the second way is on the first Saturday first Saturday prayer it's the first Saturday of every month at 10 o'clock that is a, a, a online prayer time we'd love to have you join us but if you sign up today uh, you will be given the prayer list the prayer guide that goes out each and every way every <laughs> that's easy for you to say each and every week you'll receive that prayer guide. James chapter 5 verse 16 says, when a believing person prays, great things happen. We have the confidence that God hears our prayer. I welcome you to Braisewood Church this morning. We're glad to have you with us. For those of you online, thank you for joining with us and we want to make you feel right at home. Well, you are at home. We're glad that you've joined with us. And for those of you in the sanctuary on, on campus, it's good to see you this morning. Give me a smile. Give me a smile. See, Pastor Steve, how can you see? I think about half, two-thirds of the congregation are wearing masks. How can you see the smile? I can see it in your eyes. There's just something about somebody who's smiling, somebody that's joyous or happy. It's, it's communicated through your eyes, and it's, it's really good to see you here this morning to our first, second, and third time guests. Again, we're honored. We pray that you've been made to feel at home. And if you didn't, if for some reason you encountered anything other than our desire to make you feel at home, please stop by and talk to me after service because we want to make it right in your life. I want to encourage you that God's desire for our life is that we will soar. God has called us to soar. Now when I say soar, I was talking to Donna, we were out of town, we were in Hot Springs, Arkansas this past week, and, and I mentioned to Donna, when I say God wants us to soar, I don't mean S-O-R. God doesn't want you to be sore. God wants you to soar. And I want to encourage you to stretch out your wings of faith and let the wind of the Holy Spirit carry you higher than you have ever been before in your life. I believe with all of my heart that God wants to take us higher and higher. I want you to turn for just a moment to Isaiah chapter 40. It is our, our launch for the new year to soar, S-O-A-R. We are called to soar. The prophet said that those who trust in the Lord those who have placed their trust in God, he said, we will soar on wings like eagles. I declare to you this morning, you are not a turkey. You don't gobble like a turkey. You soar like an eagle. I, I see eagles this morning in the sanctuary. I, I see people who have faith in God, trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to encourage you, wherever you are in your relationship with God, God wants to take you higher. For those of you who have been serving the Lord for 20, 30, 40, 50 years, and you think you've arrived at the highest place there is. No, you haven't. God desires to take you higher than you could ever imagine that you would be able to go in your life. Psalms chapter 61 verse 2 says, I call to you from the ends of the earth when I am afraid, and you carry me away to a high mountain. Fear has no hold on you. Fear has no hold on an eagle. An eagle has no fear. In fact, if an eagle has a predator, the eagle will fly high above the predator 
My brother and sister, you're going to fly higher than the problems of your life. You're going to high, fly higher than the difficulties and challenges that you face in your life. The psalmist said, when I'm afraid, when I'm afraid, and my word to you this morning is when you're afraid, go higher. When you're fearful, go higher. When there's no answers, go higher. When somebody wants to hold you down, go higher. God wants to take you to a higher plane than you've ever been before. The call of God in the scriptures that his desire is to take us higher. In my word, I've got a word for you this morning, and I want everyone in this sanctuary to hear this word. Don't allow anything or anyone to hold you down. I want to say it again. Don't allow anything or anyone to hold you down. God desires to lift you higher and higher and higher. And now there's nobody at Brazewood that wants to hold somebody down. Remember, there are two types of people in the world, basement people and balcony people. Basement people try to pull you down. Maybe they pull you down because they don't want to be lonely. That's sick. We don't, we don't pull people down. We are balcony people. We lift people up. We want to be an encouragement into your life. Our word is, you can't do it. Our word is, you can do it through Jesus Christ. We're not here to limit you. God doesn't limit us. God removes the limits from our life. God removes the chains and the bondage from our life so that we can soar to the highest heights that he's called us to. Word declares clearly that God wants you to know. Don't allow anyone to hold you down. Don't allow anyone to hold you back. Don't let anyone tell you it can't be done. I wonder how many times... Or how many things have never been accomplished because somebody told somebody who had in mind to do something nobody else had ever done, but they were told, you can't do it. You don't have the education. You don't have the finances. You don't have the intellect. You don't have the background. You don't have a litany of different things they tell you you don't have. And they hold you down. They hold you back. I wonder how many inventions were never invented. How many businesses never started. How many lies were not transformed because somebody told you it can't be done? I want you to know God removes the limits from our lives. I said God removes the limits from our lives. God won't hold you down. God will lift you up. And I want to encourage you, take that step of faith in those things that God has called you to do. Let nothing, no limitation, hold you back from what God has called you to do. And don't let anybody limit what God can do in your life. Not circumstances, not people, not even life. Don't let life limit you. God doesn't limit. God liberates. God has called you to soar over the challenges that you face. I'm not going to ask you, but I assure you, there are people in this room that have faced significant challenges this week. Life challenges. The things that life throws at you just because you're alive. You didn't do anything wrong. You didn't make wrong choices, bad decisions. You're just facing the challenges that you're facing because you're alive. You're living. Jesus said, in this world you'll have challenges. In this world you'll have trouble. But he didn't leave us with those words. How, how, how sad, how discouraging it would be if Jesus said, in this world you're going to have trouble. Period. But he didn't say that. He said, you're going to have trouble, but be encouraged. Take heart. I have overcome the thing that creates the trouble in your life. With Jesus, you're going to overcome in the power of the Spirit. Not only will you face and overcome the challenges of life, but you'll overcome the man-made challenges as well. The challenges of our decisions, the challenges of our choice. That God will give you the strength to navigate through everything you will face in your life. And we've discovered through the different heroes of faith that we come to a decision in our life that we become wholly dissatisfied. Wholly dissatisfied. Now, in a context, where I am with the Lord, I'm happy where I am. God has blessed my life. Don and I, driving back from Hot Springs, said, God has blessed me. I will tell you, of all the people in the world, God has blessed this man. But I want to tell you something. He's not finished blessing me. He's not done. I have only scratched the surface of the blessings of the Lord in my life. But we come to that place where we realize... Even though I am blessed, even though God has done magnificent, supernatural, powerful things in my life, there is more He desires to do. There's a greater revelation that He desires to bring. So we come to that place where I am wholly dissatisfied. 
dissatisfied with the limitations that I've placed upon my own life, dissatisfied with a stagnation that comes because I've accepted those limitations. I'm not going anywhere. Dissatisfied with a lack of productivity because of the limitations in my life. I'm alive. I'm just not producing anything. I'm alive. I'm not accomplishing anything. In other words, I've, I'm stagnated. I, I'm, not, I'm not going up. I'm not going down. I'm just not going anywhere. I want you to know God's taken you somewhere. God declares, I know the plans I have for you. And he declares so that there's no misunderstanding or misrepresentation. He said, I know the plans I have for you. And by the way, they're good plans. Better than you could plan for yourself. Better than you could devise for yourself. And when we come to that place where we are wholly dissatisfied, when we come to that place where we realize there is more in my life, there is more that I can attain, there is more that I can receive, there is more that I can know about God, when we come to that place, then we realize I will walk with God. We realize we open our heart to receive the more that God has. The prophet Isaiah knew this. In Isaiah chapter 48, verse 17, he said, Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One, I am the Lord your God who teaches you to ascend, who leads you by the way that you should go. And as we've gone through the past in the scriptures, we've looked at several people that are models for us of people that knew that there was more. I've often wondered for the heroes of faith, for those men and women that have accomplished so much for God. And by the way, let me just encourage you today. All of the heroes in the Bible are ordinary people. How, how we put people on pedestals. And we put Peter, we put Paul, we put these people on pedestals. And, and all that they accomplished, all that was accomplished through their lives. And, and by doing that, we look at them presuming that they did it, but I can't do it. I'm going to tell you how Paul did it. He didn't do it because he was Paul. He did it because he was a child of God. It wasn't his strength. wasn't his wisdom. wasn't his know-how. It was the Spirit of God flowing through him. And the same Spirit that was flowing through Paul is a Spirit that is flowing through you. No, I don't think you got that. I don't think you got it. What made Paul different? He knew there was more. And it motivated him. The same Holy Spirit... There wasn't a Holy Spirit that was first century Holy Spirit and then God created another Holy Spirit for 2022. No way. The same Holy Spirit that indwelled Paul and Peter and the apostles is a Holy Spirit that indwells your life today. That means that the same Holy Spirit that empowered, motivated, strengthened, and was the guide for Paul is the guide for you as well. So take the limits off. We, we talked about Hannah, we talked about David, we talked about Paul and Peter, Esther. We dealt with Nehemiah, we dealt with, last Sunday we dealt with a woman with the issue of blood. We dealt with Zacchaeus, the tax collector, hated, despised. We, we, even, we even dealt with blind Bartimaeus who had to rely upon the compassion of other people literally not only to sustain him but to lead him around. All of these people, now the last three that we dealt with, we don't know at the time that they were followers of Jesus, but they'd heard about Christ. They heard about what he had done. And they believed that if he did something for someone, he can do something for me. I'm here to testify to you this morning. For those of you that may be here out of curiosity, you, you may be here because somebody invited you or, or you came here because you had to come and you're just not sure about all of it. Let me just tell you, the woman with the issue of blood had heard about Jesus and what he had done. Zacchaeus never presumed that he could have a relationship with Jesus. Uh, Bartimaeus, again, the compassion of humanity just to allow him to exist and to get him to be where Jesus was passing by. They didn't have a relationship before they came to him, but they certainly had a relationship after they came to him. They realized there was more. That's what drew, drove them to come to Jesus in the first place. There has to be more. My brother and sister, I'll tell you, wherever you are today, you don't have to settle for what life has given you. There is more. And you find the more when you find Jesus Christ. And I'm not talking about religion. I'm not, I'm not talking about tradition. I'm not talking about church membership. The more is in a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. There is more, infinitely more. Each of them had a sense of knowing there must be more. That was what drove them. 
And my brother and sister, if each of us here today will give in to that sense that God has more for me, God has more to flow through me, God has more, we will have the power to press in and to do what God has called us to do, even though it may seem impossible to us. Well, today I want to add another name. And this is a unique character in the Bible. Um, his name is Noah. Noah is a unique character because of what he accomplished. This man built a boat. Not just a boat. This man built a ship, a huge ship. And I'll show you a picture of what it would look like in just a moment. We find the life of Noah in Genesis chapter 6 through Genesis chapter 19. The name Noah literally means rest or comfort. That's an interesting thing. It, the, the Bible or theologians indicate that it took Noah somewhere between 20 and 40 years to build the ark. 20 to 40 years. Let's just split it in the middle and say 30 years. There are people that have worked on their job 30 years or are looking to retire. Noah had just begun. 30 years working, hard labor, not, not, a, not an easy job at all. He was a son of Lemek, the ninth descendant of, a, of Adam. A very short period of time, historically speaking. Noah almost certainly lived in Mesopotamia, somewhere in the land situated around the Tigris and the Euphrates River. Now there was water there close, but there was no water to float that boat. There was no water that could sustain that boat. And he lived in a rebellious world in a very short period of time. Just a few generations, how humanity had fallen so far. But Noah, take note of this this morning, Noah was different. Noah was different than everyone else there. Genesis chapter, nine verse, chapter 6 verse 9 says, Noah was a good man. Well, that's interesting, but that's not enough. The most innocent man of his time. Well, that's good, but that wasn't enough. But the end tells you all about the story. And Noah walked with God. That's what made Noah different. That was the motivation behind Noah knowing there was more. Now, now I'm going to live to be 120 years old. And I'm, I'm almost there. <laughs> but, but if you want to write an epitaph, if you want to mark something on my gravestone, what would honor me are these words, he walked with God. You don't have to talk about any accomplishments. You don't have to talk about where I've been, what I've done. All you need to say about me, he walked with God. And that tells you all about Noah. That tells you just about all you need to know about Noah as a man who knew there was more. You see, Noah knew God because Noah walked with God. I will tell you, if you serve the Lord for a short period of time, you will get to know God more and more and more and more. But not only did Noah walk with God, but because Noah walked with God, Noah knew there was more. Something about what God told him to do. He was commanded to build a boat, but not just any boat. This boat was huge. This boat was spectacular. I want you to go to that slide, if you would, gentlemen, and show the slide of the ark. This is the ark experience out of Kentucky. This ark was built the same design and dimensions of the ark in the Bible. Now, I want to give you the scale, if you would. You see those, those giraffes there? You see them? Kind of right almost in the middle of the page. You see that little white dot right to the right of those giraffes? That's Donna. That's Donna. That tells you how big this thing was. There was no body of water around Noah that was enough to float that boat. It was absolute. Now that's only about half of the ark. Just about half the size. You can't get it in the whole camera unless you back way up and then you wouldn't be able to see my beautiful wife Donna. Isn't she so photogenic in that picture? It, it, it's, it's an amazing work. And it took between 20 and 40 years to build that. That in and of itself is a miraculous miracle. Genesis chapter 6 verse 14 and 15 says, build a boat of cypress wood for yourself, make rooms in it and cover it inside and out with tar. 
And, and, and this is what I love about God. Our God doesn't just speak in grand generalities. How specific he was. This is how big I want you to build the boat. 450 feet long. Now some of you are going to be watching the Super Bowl this afternoon. This ark would fill the stadium and more. It, it would hang over 450 feet long and 75 feet wide and 45 feet high. Now what's interesting is recently they've done, scientists who have a lot of time on their hand have done some research about whether or not that ark would be able to float or if it was stable. And they discovered that the ark was very, very stable. Well, of course it's stable. God gave the dimensions for the ark. Can you imagine that God would give dimensions and then a wave would come and float it away or just blow it over? No way. God knows, hear me this morning, God knows exactly what he is doing. And God had a plan, and God has a plan for each and every one of our lives. There was no water around Noah that was sufficient to float that boat. And Noah knew it, and he still obeyed God. Noah know, knew building that boat would require a miracle to float it. And if you read the end of the story, God is a God of miracles. And the boat floated. But not only did Noah know there was no body of water around them that would float that boat, everybody around Noah knew it as well. Everyone around Noah. Which means that you can only surmise that there was a lot of people making fun of Noah and his family. If, if, if your stand for Jesus Christ, if your stand for faith causes people to make fun of you or causes people to doubt you, you're in good company. You're in good company. We can assume that, that Noah warned people about the coming flood. First Peter, excuse me, 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 5 says, But God saved Noah who preached about being right with God. I'm sure Noah was asked, What in the world are you building? I'm building a boat. How big is the boat? It will fill up a football stadium. What's a football stadium? That's what they would have said if he had said that. The reality of it is, I'm sure there were questions, and I know there were doubters. There always is. People that were doubting. And can I tell you, they probably ridiculed Noah right up until the time that the water started to rise. And all of a sudden, reality set in. Noah knew there must be more. And I want you to hear this this morning. Noah risked living out of the ordinary. To build that ark was not something that was common. Not even something that was acceptable for that period of time. That day and time wouldn't be acceptable today. Noah risked stepping out of the ordinary. And I want to challenge you with those words this morning. The, the Noah of the ark is the Noah that followed the direction of God, who was willing to step out of the ordinary, to step out of what was comfortable. Building the ark wasn't comfortable, the act itself. But simply obeying God in that moment of hearing what God required of him, what God desired, he had to step out of the ordinary. He had to step out of what was comfortable to him. And I want to tell you this morning, God may be calling you to do the same. God may be calling you to step out of what is comfortable in your life, how we love to be comfortable. And, and how every person that we have indicated and more, all of our heroes of faith, were people that were willing to step out of their comfort zone. Willing to do what was extraordinary. It takes no faith to live an ordinary life. It takes no power to live an ordinary life. But oh, it takes more of God to step out of what is comfortable in our life. And not only did he step out of what was common, but he risked that he would look foolish. More and more today, if you're a person of faith, a man and woman of faith, in many places you are thought to be foolish. Your faith is foolish. To believe there is a God is foolish. Certainly to believe in the power of God is foolishness in, in every sense of the word. And he literally risked everything. That Building that boat required all of his attention. 
Requir required all of his energy. For Noah to build that boat, he had to put himself completely into the task. And I want you to know this morning, Noah did that because he walked with God. And Noah, having walked with God, knew that God had more for him than that. I want, you to tell, I want to tell you something this morning. You and I are building an ark. We're building an ark. I'm not talking about a church. I'm not talking about a building. We are building the message of Jesus Christ, proclaiming the message of Jesus Christ to a world who thinks it is foolish. We're stepping out of the ordinary in obeying the Word, in following the Word, in knowing the Word, living the Word, confessing the Word every day of our life. And we risk people making fun of us. We, we risk people thinking we're foolish. We risk people thinking we're wasting our lives, when in reality, we're not wasting our lives, we're investing our lives. We're building an ark. This church is not the ark. This church has never saved anybody. This church has never redeemed anybody. This church has never healed anybody. But what this church represents is we represent Jesus Christ. We represent the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And as we're willing to step out in faith, as we're willing to step out of the common and the ordinary, as we're willing to embrace the knowledge that there's more to life than where we are right now, as wonderful and abundant as may be, that, that God has more for us. And that God knows what he's doing. And we take that step of faith. We are proclaiming to the world. You see, there's a lot of parallels between Noah's day and today. If you read Luke chapter 17 and 1 Peter chapter 3, you'll discover there's a lot of similarities between Noah's day and today. But God, I want you to hear me this morning, God will always create an ark. God will always create a safe place for people to run to. And to find safety and security when everything else is falling apart in their life. I'm sure Noah was mocked for obeying God. But how many of you know, they may have made fun of him, but they came to believe in the God that he served. Unfortunately, it was too late. You're building an ark. Your life is an ark. Your testimony is an ark. Can I tell you something this morning when you got up? And when you got in your car and you drove to church, and for those of you that are, that are online, when you awoken and awakened and you, you came to worship the Lord with us, people are watching you. People are watching. When I drive through our neighborhood, occasionally at this time in the morning, I usually leave about, about 7.30 in the morning. Not a lot of people out, but there's some golfers that are out. And when I drive by the golfers, I'm waving at them. Can I tell you something? I don't have to have a sign on my car tell them where I'm going. Most of them know where I'm going. I'm building an ark. Don and I were at breakfast in Hot Springs. We don't know anybody in Hot Springs. We were at uh, the Pancake House, IHOP. Had a beautiful, wonderful breakfast. Oh, it was good. I had an omelet. Now you don't want to know that. Not right now, anyway. <laughs> we, we finished our meal, and we walked outside. Literally, the, our car was parked almost right in front of the door, and we, we walked out. And as we walked out, I noticed, I noticed to my left there was a man sitting on a bench. He had a, a Vietnam veteran's cap on, he had a cane with him, an older man sitting there. And, and we walked, and as I walked by him, I kind of gave him the, the nod. And I walked to the car, and before I got to the car, he said, Sir, sir. And I turned around. He said, Will you pray for me? I talk about divine appointments. That was a divine appointment. I said, Excuse me? <laughs> he said, Will you pray for me? I thought, I turned to him and I said, Mr., you don't know what you're asking me. I said, I'm a pastor. And I believe in the power of prayer. Donna was right there with me. And so we talked to the man. He had just lost his daughter, was killed in a hit-and-run accident. And he was just literally forlorn. I mean, I mean he was just beside himself. And, and, and so we, we ministered to him there for a while, and we, we prayed for him. We prayed encouragement and faith. We prayed God's comfort in his heart. We talked to him about the Lord. And then we said our goodbyes. He thanked us. And, oh, by the way, he said... That woman, she is the most beautiful woman I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then he said, 
If you hadn't got her first, I'd have gotten her. <laughs> I said, it's too late, old man. <laughs> no, I didn't say that. But I turned, we got in the car, and I turned to Donna, and I said, can you believe what just happened? A divine appointment. I said, mister, you don't know who you're talking to. I said, I'm a pastor of a church in Houston, Texas, and we believe in the power of prayer. You see, in that moment, building an ark. And, and sometimes you build an ark and you have no clue what God is doing. It's not like you wake up one day and say, I'm going to talk to a man sitting on a bench in front of the IHOP restaurant. I'm going to pray for him. No, you're just going about your business. You're just going about a, a normal day. But you're going about your life knowing there must be more. And we build an ark with our lives. Not an ark that's a memorial to ourselves. Not, not an ark that makes us look big in faith but an ark that leads people to safety, leads people to salvation, leads people to eternity, leads people to know there must be more. And I want to encourage you this morning, build the ark. Well, they could make fun of you. And now, now I, I know what the end of the story is, but, but I might have prayed for that man, and as we drove away, he might have laughed and thought, how foolish are those people? I was just making fun of them. I don't care. Planted a seed planted a seed. And it's not my job to make the seed grow. It's my job to plant the seed and let the Holy Spirit germinate that seed within the person's heart and life. And by that, we're building an ark, risking stepping out of the ordinary. I, I, I can tell you there have been times that I probably waved somebody by because I was too busy or I had some place to go. But if we're willing to pray, Lord, Open my eyes to the divine appointments that you place in my life. And when you do, I will take my time. We're building an ark. Would you bow your heads with me, please? At the beginning of the service, I spoke to those who were just not sure. People come to churches for probably a hundred different reasons. Some was just curiosity. Heard about that church. Maybe invited by somebody. And looked at their life and thought, well, they've invited me, maybe I'll get a lunch out of it. But you've come here this morning. And I pray, if, if there's only one thing that you've experienced today, I pray that you've experienced the knowledge that there must be more. There must be more. More than my life as it is. More than the hurt and pain that I've experienced. There must be more. And I want to introduce you to the one who will give you, provide for you, and show you that there is more. His name is Jesus. His name is not Brazewood. His name is not Banning. His name is Jesus. And if you'll come to Jesus, you don't have to have all the answers. You have a lot of questions. I have questions. But you're willing to take that step of faith, trust, to say, look, I've tried everything else. Nothing is satisfied. I just have this deep knowing in my life that there's more, that there's more than anything that I've discovered, anything that I've gone through, there's more. I'm going to take that step towards you, God, and I'm going to, I'm going to give you an opportunity to show me who you are. I believe God will do that. Our God is not an angry God. Our God is not a frustrated God. My God is a happy God, and he loves you, and he's willing to show you who he is and demonstrate to you that through him you will experience more. And I'm going to ask, and, and while every head is bowed and every eye closed, I want to speak to the parents for just a moment and tell you that in almost every service from the beginning of this year, people have accepted Jesus Christ. Beautiful. But I want parents, mom and dad, I want you to hear this. It's not uncommon that our children will receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior too. When I ask for hands to be raised so that I can pray with somebody, inevitably, the little children and older children, teens, will raise their hand. That's the power of God to reveal himself to everyone who will simply open their heart to know there is more. And I want to pray for somebody here this morning that, that knows or needs more in your life. Again, you may have doubts, you may have questions. They may not all be resolved in this moment, but you're willing to take that step to trust God and say, Lord, I'm going I'm to open my heart to you. 
I'm going to open my life. And it may be not so much that you have doubts and questions, a prodigal who knew God at one time. Walk with God, but for whatever reason, some reason you, you, you strayed away and you're coming back to the Lord today. Some of you came into this sanctuary because you know you want to get right with God. But I'm going to ask you to do something overtly. I'm going to ask you in just a moment to raise your hand to do that so that I can pray for you and pray with you. And not for joining a church because it's not about church membership. It's not about how much you know. It's not about a tradition or religion. It's about a relationship with Jesus Christ that begins when you pray this prayer. So I'm going to ask, if you're here this morning on campus and you, you want to be forgiven of sin, you want a relationship with God, you want more in your life than you've ever experienced before, or you want to rededicate your life to the Lord, I want you to do one thing right now, and that's just raise your hand and wave at me so I can see you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Praise the Lord. In the balcony, God bless you. Young man, young lady right there. God loves you guys. Anybody else? Thank you. This is an opportunity to experience life. Not, a, not, not, li, not getting by, not, not just existing, but literally living life to its fullest. I'm going to ask one more time. If you're here this morning, you wish you had raised your hand. You wish you had given that invitation, but but you want to before we leave, just wave. If you didn't before, wave. Thank you. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. And I want everyone in this room to pray. And by the way, those of you online, I didn't see your hand, but I want to assure you of one thing. God saw your hand. God sees your heart. And if you're willing to just open up your heart, even just a little bit to the Lord, God will find you. And God will show you that he's got more for you than you could even ask or imagine. And so we're going to pray this prayer. Now, it's more than just saying words. It's more than just repeating or parroting what somebody else says. You've got to take ownership of these words. In fact, we're going to offer this prayer. All of us are going to pray it together. But but I would encourage you when you get home or, or on your own alone, pray your own prayer. Pray what's in your heart. Pray, pray what's in your spirit. But right now we're going to pray this prayer. I want everyone in the sanctuary, everyone at home, praying this prayer, prayer together. Heavenly Father, today, February 13th, 2022, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I ask you to forgive me of every wrong I have ever done. And Heavenly Father, change my life. Transform my life. I've tried it. I can't do it. But I give you the opportunity to change my life. I believe there is more. And I look to you today to reveal more in my life. I confess Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I confess that I am a sinner. But today... I surrender my life to you. I surrender my past. I surrender the wrong I've done. I surrender all to you today. Transform my life. Change my life. Day by day. And I receive this trusting you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I, we, we go through this every Sunday. But the Bible says that if even one person commits their life to Jesus Christ, one person surrenders their life to a new beginning, the Bible says all of heaven rejoices. And if heaven rejoices today, I believe Brazewood ought to rejoice. So let's rejoice in the Lord. Give the Lord a praise offering. Hallelujah. (laughs) Praise God. And let me remind you of this. This is not the end. This is the beginning. The beginning of a brand new life. And I want to encourage you, if you raise your hand, and you would like somebody to pray with you or encourage you, we want to encourage you to come immediately after this service for just a moment. Again, not about membership, not about joining church, not about religion, but we want to invest in your life. If you want somebody to walk with you in this new adventure of faith, we have a, we have a class. It is a discipleship class that just learns about who God is, who we are, who Jesus is, and just learns to create a foundation for the faith of our new life. And I want to encourage you to join with us. One of our deacons, Brother Godfrey Uko, is here. He'll be here to meet with you and, and just encourage you in your walk and tell you a little bit about the class that is available to you. No charge, obviously. We want to encourage you in the Lord. Amen? It's time to receive the Lord's tithes and offerings. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Now let me just add, for those of you that are guests, it's not an obligation for you to give in this offering. 
we're not even expecting you to give this morning. If you desire to partner with us, we'd be happy to receive that. But it's not an expectation. We want you to just relax. You're our guest here this morning. But, but I want to encourage you, our theme for February is become a conduit. Do you know what a conduit is? A conduit, the definition of a conduit is a natural or artificial channel through which something is delivered. The, the conduit doesn't create what is delivered. It simply allows what is delivered to flow through it. Luke chapter 6 verse 38 says, For if you give, you will receive. Your gift will return to you in full and overflowing measure. Press down, shaking together to make room for more. And running over. Whatever measure you use to give, large or small, will be used to measure what is given back to you. The conduit that you are is not only a conduit that God will flow through you, but God will provide for you. And, and what we've suggested and what says here, I've suggested to you before, the overflow is not waste. God doesn't waste anything. The overflow of the blessings of the Lord is not for us to bank because we rely upon God daily for our provision, but the overflow blessing, the running over blessing, is for us to invest in someone's life. Like this gentleman that God gave us the opportunity to meet and minister in Hot Springs, Arkansas. The overflow blessing of our life is not to hoard or to hold, but to release. The tithe and offerings that you give is for the ministries of the church and the outreach of Brazewood. But I want you to know, God desires to use you beyond this church in your maximum impact environment. That place that God has strategically placed you where you have the greatest potential to make the greatest impact for the kingdom of God. And that's not in this building. That's where you go, where you live, where you work, where you go to school. So as you receive the blessing of the Lord, you have an opportunity to share that blessing with somebody. You talk about building an ark. Sometimes the first nail of the ark is to show the blessings of the Lord in somebody's life. The purpose of the conduit is not to be the source. The purpose of the conduit is allow the source to flow through your life. Allow God to flow through you. Allow God to use you for his glory and honor. And as I've said before, when you present the Lord's tithes and offerings, your obedience declares that you have faith in God and that your life is in God's hands. I want you to make note of this. There are four ways to give. Number one, you give by mailing in your tithes and offerings to Brazewood Church, 106 115 Houston, Texas, 77096. Or you can go to our website or our phone app. Both places you'll find a safe and secure link for presenting your tithes and offerings to the Lord. Or you can do what we're going to do in a moment, and that is present your tithes and offerings with thanksgiving to the Lord in person. Now, some of the cultures represented at Brazewood, when an offering is presented, it's just not walking down the aisle and throwing something in the plate. It's celebrating what God has provided. You know what that's all about. I've seen you. I've watched you do that. And I want to encourage you, be released to celebrate. Be released to dance in the presence of the Lord as you present your love offering to the Lord. Amen? You don't have to be in Nigeria or Africa to do that. You can do that right here at Brazewood Assembly of God Church. And I would love to see it. I'm going to be standing right here watching. And I know some of you. I know some of you. So be encouraged. And if you would, take just a moment to watch these upcoming Brazewood announcements. Make note, there's some special things coming up.
also want to encourage you to join with us on Wednesday night. Choose joy. Choose, joy is always the best choice that you can make in your life.